Today we're going to be taking an animation that we've made in Adobe XD and convert it into a GIF using GIF Brewery. Let's jump into it. First, we'll record our animation using XD's built-in tool. Then we'll bring it into GIF Brewery to turn it into a GIF. And finally, export it for use all over the World Wide Web. It's that simple. But before we even open XD, I want to talk a little bit about when to use a GIF instead of an MP4. If you're already a pro with file formats, feel free to skip ahead using the timestamps below. I think when most of us think of a GIF, we think of the fun ones we sent to our friends via Giphy or other applications. And there's a reason they're used in these settings at smaller sizes. GIFs tend to be grainy, they have limited color support, and they can slow your web performance down since they're typically larger files. Not to mention that MP4s already auto-loop on social channels. So you must be wondering, what's the point of even using a GIF if an MP4 is clearly superior? In which I would say there's a few reasons. First, if you're a Dribbble user, only Pro members are given access to upload MP4s. Second, if you're uploading your animation to your website and your GIF is small enough, I'd recommend less than 250 KB, but we can talk more about that later, it's much faster to just upload a GIF than an MP4 and write the custom code for auto-looping. With our knowledge of MP4s versus GIFs now set, let's jump into XD. So here's our animation, and the first thing that we'll want to do is to navigate up into preview mode, because our objective here is to obtain this as an MP4 since we'll be using that as our foundation to convert it into a GIF. What I can then do is click on this record button and we'll notice that nothing's really happening. And we know that because this time count indicator here isn't moving, but that's okay. That's simply because um, our system by default doesn't allow XD the permissioning to record our screen. Um, so there's a pretty easy fix for that. What we'll want to do is to go up into our system preferences, go into security and privacy, scroll down to screen recording and check the box for Adobe XD. This will make us force quit Adobe XD, but that's okay. Now that XD has permission to record our screen, we can re-enter preview mode, hit that record button, and let it record our animation. What I like to do here is let the animation loop a few times, or I will give my first artboard like a two to three second time delay, and that's just ensuring that the first few frames of the animation don't get cut off. So I've let this loop a few times. I'm going to end the recording, save it. That's fine. And now we're good to jump into GIF Brewery. Here we are in GIF Brewery. I've already gone ahead and loaded our animation. Now we can get to work with things like trimming the footage, adjusting the speed, and optimizing the GIF. Let's kick things off by setting a start and end time. This trimming can also be done in QuickTime or with another video editor, but for the sake of this tutorial, we're just going to keep things simple and keep everything in GIF Brewery. You'll see I'm just dragging these handles here until I'm happy with the footage. Next, let's head over to settings. I like to click this box here, calculate frame count and delay. Remember, a GIF is basically a flipbook of images, so think of each image as a frame. What's awesome is that this checkbox is automatically calculating what that frame count should be and then what the FPS, frames per second, should be set to. But what does frame count in FPS even mean? To be as straightforward as possible, frame count is how many frames there are. The more you have, the smoother and more detailed your movement will be. But everything has a cost. Your file will quickly increase in size if you set this too high. Frame delay, on the other hand, is how much time in between those frames. Increasing this will also increase file size, because the GIF will consequently be longer. In summary, check this checkbox and you should be good. But the control is there if you need it. Let's play that back. It's all right, but what if I wanted it a little bit slower? Enter scene, the speed slider. If we wanted to, we could slow it down a bit by dragging the handle to the left, but we're just gonna leave it at 100. Now we get to the loop section. If we wanted, we could get particular with how the GIF is looped, how many times it loops, and the time between loops. But for this tutorial, we're going to just breeze past this section since it isn't even really necessary for what we're trying to accomplish. Last, but certainly not least, we have colors. Now, how does color affect a GIF? Generally, the more flat color areas you have, the smaller the GIF. Anything that disturbs this regularity, dithering, drop shadows, anti-aliased text, will increase either the number of colors or the number of unique pixel patterns, and thus increase the file size. So we'll see some options here. Similarly to looping, we're just gonna breeze past this section and leave it set to ordered. And there we have it, settings complete. 
let's export and share our creation with the world. To wrap things up full circle, I'll be uploading to Dribbble since non-pro members have to opt for sharing GIFs as opposed to MP4. I encourage you to share to your preferred social platform, Dribbble, Behance, Twitter, DeviantArt, post it to your mom's Facebook wall, you name it. You have made it to the end of this tutorial. Thanks for sticking around and I hope you learned a thing or two. You can find my social channels linked below. I challenge you to send me your favorite GIF and bonus points if it's one you've made. Well, it's been fun and I'll see you on the next one.